The lionfish invasion is over and the occupation has begun. But now, what's going to happen? Just how much will these invasive species affect our native ecosystems? Scientists are rushing to find out, but there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of lionfish here, so it's a really good place to study them, and they just arrived a couple of years ago. They're mixing in with the natives, so it's a really interesting evolutionary phenomena. So we've got these native species that have really co-evolved over tens or hundreds of thousands of years. Now we're throwing in these new species into the mix. And the system's functioning in different ways than it used to, and that, that's a big thing we're trying to figure out, is how do systems function when you mix a predator and a prey that have never seen each other, you know, they're kind of new to the dance, and they're trying to figure out how to interact with each other. Are these predator and prey interactions the key to the success of the lionfish? To find out, UNC students and graduates set up an experiment with the help of a local dive operator. We went to the Abaco Island to answer this specific question. Are small fish in the Caribbean identifying lionfish as a predator? Of course, they had to find a few lionfish specimens, which is not very difficult these days. We build these cages. They are almost one meter long, and they are divided in the middle. And this divider is a fine mesh. So on one side, we have the Caribbean prey, and then on the other side of the cage is the predator. And the predator and the prey, they could see each other, they could smell each other, but they could, the predator couldn't eat the prey. This setup was used for native predators, like grouper and the non-native lionfish. We record the um, reaction of this Caribbean prey to NASA grouper, and also we record the reaction of the same species to lionfish, and we compare this reaction. The experiment worked, and they were able to measure the reaction of the prey to different predators. Preliminary results in our experiment are showing that small fish in the Caribbean, they actually approach closer to the mouth of lionfish than they do to other native predators. These results, they can partially explain um, the invasion success of lionfish in the Caribbean. In the wild, small fish know to avoid native predators like groupers, but they don't know what a lionfish is and they don't avoid them which is bad news when the lionfish is hungry. If a lot of species in the Caribbean, they are naive to lionfish and they don't know they are predators, this is actually very bad news for Caribbean fisheries. Maybe native species will adapt to this new predator, or maybe they won't, and get eaten to the brink of extinction. Could the lionfish eat that much? How fast are they consuming fish? One researcher came to find out she hoped to find the answers by studying the stomach contents and the digestive rates of these invasive fish. If they're not digesting their food very fast, they may not be as big of a threat, they're still a threat. But if they're digesting their food very quickly and we're always finding food in their stomach, it means they're eating a lot. Even though there are plenty of lionfish around, they prove very tricky to catch. Just snorkel out with a couple of nets and hope for the best. For me, it was, it's been very difficult. They're surprisingly fast when they want to be, and they get up and under rocks and in holes, so it can be hard to maneuver the net. Locals have been a very important part of the process. But we have caught quite a bunch. And we bring them back and put them in tanks like these. And we catch mohara, which is a little fish, and then we feed the mohara to the lionfish. We weigh the mohara before we feed it to the lionfish, and then weigh it after to see how much of the fish is digested. 
And then we take out the stomach and we'll take out all of the stomach contents and we uh, measure it and weigh it. It seems their digestion is fairly quick. Studying the stomach contents also lets her discover what the lionfish are eating in the wild. The diet data shows that they're eating a lot of, um, all over the spectrum, they're eating a lot of different things. They're eating crabs, they're eating um, wrasse, they're eating all kinds of like little reef fish, but they'll eat almost anything. And you would be surprised at how big the fish are that they eat in, with respect to the fish. So, lionfish are eaten quickly, and other fish don't see them as a threat. But are they actually affecting the fish populations and the balance of the reef ecosystem? Down at the Cape Luther Institute, researchers, including a bohemian, are trying to answer that question. We're concerned with the impact that they're going to have on this environment in terms of introducing um, diseases um, and how that's going to play out in terms of uh, the interactions on the reef. We're looking to see how they affect biodiversity on the local catch reefs um, in the Cape Luther area. The experiment that we're running right now, we have about seven of them on a patch reef, and we did some experiments before the semester looking at um, diversity and abundance of the reef species out there. So there were no lionfish on that reef, and we added seven lionfish to that reef. And we've been doing surveys, fish surveys, to see how that changes over time. At first, they didn't find any big change in the native fish biodiversity. However, the most recent surveys have showed a decrease. Long-term decreases in abundance of native species is alarming because of the ecological and commercial significance. They are still concerned that the lionfish are altering ecosystem dynamics by decreasing biodiversity on the patch reefs. On the bright side, Researchers have seen spotted mores eating lionfish on the spare and swimming around healthy. They hope the video eels eating healthy lionfish very soon. Could this be the beginning of native predators adapting to the newcomer? A native predator could control the lionfish population. But this behavior could take hundreds, even thousands of years of evolution. In the meantime, we got to step up because they are spreading so fast, they're taking over. A lot of species, when they get to a new range, they leave their enemies at home, whether their enemies are competitors or predators or diseases or parasites. So they get there and then they just, there's nothing restraining their populations and they just really explode. I mean, their spread rate is, it just keeps getting faster and faster than anybody can really believe. It's astonishing. All this research being done here in the Bahamas is showing just how successful an invader species can be. Lionfish are eating quickly, and our native fish do not recognize them as a threat. They could eventually upset the whole marine food chain. There's so many things that we don't know about lionfish, or how an invasive species will disrupt our native ecosystem. There's a lot of work being done on whether it's that these new systems are less stable than systems composed of all native species, all co-evolved species. And there's some preliminary research that suggests that they're less stable. So storms or diseases or abrupt changes in climate can cause rapid shifts in these new systems. But it's, again, it's a very new area of research and it's kind of a hard thing to grapple with.